Hey all, this is Sammy here from Avid CNC. In this video, we're going to walk through the Avid CNC machine startup routine as well as the cycle start checklist. Checklists are one of the best safety tools that we have. They ensure that we follow a defined order of operations for safety and efficiency. They also help us to avoid easy to make mistakes. The machine startup procedure is designed to be done once at the beginning of each day and you should use the CNC Cycle Start Checklist each time you set up and run a program on the machine. Separating these lists allows us to ensure that we aren't repeating steps that are only required to be done once at the beginning of the day. We've created a desktop background design with both of these checklists so you can always have them handy and available for reference. I have a few options with illustrations and color variations, so pick the one that works best for you You'll find them linked in the description below. All right, let's jump into it. Step one, ensure that the e-stop is installed in a default position and is readily available. Step two, turn on the CNC controller and the spindle controller. To ensure that the controllers are receiving power, place your hand near the fan to see if you can feel airflow. This is a nice trick in an especially loud shop. Step three, ensure that your laptop is connected to the spindle controllers via the ethernet cable, and then open up Mach 4. Once connected, click enable. Step four, let's test the connectivity and jogger machine around using either the keyboard arrows or the jog control panel in Mach 4. I like to jog the CNC gantry forward so that the machine doesn't have to travel quite as far for the homing procedure. Step five, home your CNC machine. To do this, click zero X, Y, Z. This will give instructions to the machine to move each axis and trip the sensors at the end of each axis. This will establish the limits of the machine travel or the machine coordinates. Think about this procedure as the machine waking up from a nap and just trying to get its bearing on where it is in space. When the machine is off, the motors are not engaged, allowing the gantry to be moved around. Home XYZ will reset the machine to zero and ensure that both sides of the gantry are aligned. Step six, run the spindle warm-up program. The warm-up program allows the spindle to get up to a stable temperature before you do any work on the machine that requires accurate repeatability. It's recommended to use this warm-up procedure if your spindle has not been used for more than four to five hours. Great, now you're ready to move on to setting up your CNC project. Now that we followed the Avid CNC machine startup procedure, let's move on to the cycle start checklist. Step one, let's load our G-code program. Click the load G-code button and navigate to your file, then click open. Step two, Let's review the G-code header and the setup sheet. The G-code header will contain information related to your Avid CNC post processor. You can find the most recent post processors and install procedures linked in the description below. Step three, work holding. Next, I'll set up the work holding for the workpiece. We have a playlist in the description below and a live stream covering all the reasons you might choose over another. Here, I'm using the Omer nailer. It uses composite nails. This is a fast and easy way to work hold sheet goods such as MDF and plywood. It's also nice because if the router bit happens to overlap the work holding, it will cut right through it without doing any damage to the router bit. Step four, install the router bit. Now I can install the router bit into my spindle. If I'm working with a particularly thick material, I like to measure and ensure that the router bit sticks out enough so that the collet nut does not collide with the material if I'm doing a through cut. Ensure not to over tighten as this can damage the collet. Step five, set the work coordinate offsets. This is also commonly known as R0, origin, or datum. To learn more about zeroing, check out the videos linked below. We'll refer to our G-code header or our setup sheet to ensure that the XY datum and Z0 selection in the program matches our work coordinate offsets. In my setup, I have the XY location sent to the front left corner and Z is set to the machine bed. 
First, I'll set the XYZ location to the front, left, and top corner of the material. Place the touch plate on the corner of the material. Drive the spindle over, centered, and about one inch over the brass plate. And then attach the magnet. In Mach 4, click the Auto Z corner finding button. Then edit the text box to reflect the diameter of your tool. Then click the corresponding icon. You can hover over the buttons for more information. I'll use the front left corner. The bit will lower down and touch off the brass plate. And then we'll prompt you to rotate the flutes to contact the Y wall. Then it will move back to center and prompt you to rotate the bit to touch off the X wall and then click OK. Great! My XY location is sent to the front left corner, but the Z is set to the material surface. I'll flip the touch plate over to the Z only side of the touch plate and set the zero to my machine bed. In the touch plate menu, click the center icon for Z only touch off. Great, now my Z0 is set to the machine bed. Step 6, Regenerate Toolpath. In Mach 4, we'll click the Regenerate Toolpath button to regenerate the preview window to update our work offsets. Step 7, Preview Toolpath Window. In Mach 4, I'll make one last visual check to verify that the toolpaths look correct. A few things I like to look for include, are my toolpaths where I expected them to be? Will they collide with any work holding fixtures? Does the toolpath extend beyond the edges of the material? Step 8. Let's install the dust boot and start up the dust collection. Great! You're ready to hit cycle start! I hope this walkthrough was helpful for you. Don't forget that you can find the desktop background and more pro tip videos linked below. Thanks y'all for watching. I can't wait to see what you make and I'll see you in the shop.